Where was the model school established? The model school. We have a model. Do you like models? <laughs> yes, a model school. So a school that we can look at and then we can copy. Eden was the home of our first parents. Eden, the Garden of Eden. We're going to find out more about God's plan for this whole earth, what he wanted it to turn into. The schoolroom, these are some of the children. Uh, two of them are mine. Uh, we hadn't learned many things that we know now, but as we were learning, we were practicing, we were implementing. So we're told that the schoolroom is where? Outside. That's right, the garden. That's the schoolroom. And the lesson books. What are the lesson books? Nature. So when you think back to creation, God was making every day of creation week your lesson books. How marvelous. I, when I was younger, I never looked at it that way. But now I do. The instructor, who was the instructor in the beginning? God himself. That's right. And in our picture, uh, it's something that we're talking about in our family uh, worship time is uh, greenhouses and hothouses. And here we uh, put up a little greenhouse to protect the plants from the hot, hot sun. And uh, actually, this was in a residential area. We didn't know we had to have a permit to put one up. And this strong wind came one day and took down the greenhouse, but we still had the beds and we had the plants growing, and then we were told we had to have a permit. Well, we didn't get a permit, and uh, we didn't put the greenhouse back up, but we did continue to grow in our backyard. <clears throat> and the students, who were the students in the beginning? Adam and Eve, that's right. Adam and Eve were the students. And uh, this is a picture of uh, my little family and this other family that came and spent 10 months with us. And we learned a lot from them. What image and glory were Adam and Eve created to be? What image? God's image. We were made in the image of God. And <clears throat> we were created to shine forth his glory. You know, as I went over this PowerPoint um, just a little bit before this class, the Lord showed me a number of things I had not seen before. And that's what God will he'll do with you as well. As you study, as you commune with him, he shows you a little bit now. He'll show you a little more at another time. So don't think you've got it just because you've read over something one time. And I hope to maybe bring out some of the things that God just opened my eyes to with this very study. All right, so the image of God is what we were created to be and his glory. What's his glory? His character. That's right. 1 Corinthians eleven seven says, Of God they had received endowments not unworthy of their high destiny. What's a destiny? Yes. Are we going to just live a short time and that's all? Or are you planning to live forever? I hope forever. Some of us may die before Jesus comes back. Some may be alive when he comes and be uh, raised up with him. But our destiny is hopefully eternity. And what determines your destiny? Your character. And that's what God is wanting to restore in you. That's what education is all about, having God's character restored in you. And he can do that. He's got the creative ability. I have also a... Um, way to help us see what makes up our destiny and if you have paper and pencil children and even adults you can start with drawing a seed we talked about that in worship 
planting seeds. And um, you start with a seed, and the seed represents a thought. And that thought, hopefully it's from God's Word, it's a good thought, a right thought, will grow. You plant that seed, God's Word, in your children's hearts, and it's going to grow. So the thought grows into feelings. Feelings grow into actions. Actions grow into, what do you think? Habits. And habits grow into character, and character grows into your destiny. So you're deciding by your very thoughts, feelings, actions, habits, your destiny. Because your thoughts and your feelings combined make up your character. So that's what God is trying and wanting to do in education. All right, Adam and Eve had a form. Their form was graceful and symmetrical. Graceful and symmetrical form. Their feature was regular and beautiful. These are all characteristics that God loves. And their countenance. Our countenance is our face. What does is, what is our face express? Well, their face was glowing with the tint of health and the light of joy and hope. And I hope that your countenance is lit up with those characteristics as well. Glowing with the tint of health and the light of joy and hope. Whom did they outwardly resemble? Adam and Eve, now we're talking about. Who did they outwardly resemble? The likeness of their maker. The likeness of the creator. Was their outward appearance? Who did they resemble internally? Mind and soul. Mind and soul. Do you think it was Christ, their creator as well? It was. Every faculty of the mind and soul reflected the Creator's glory. I have some felts that to, to help remind us and show us some mind faculties. Can you think of any mind faculties? Memory. Pardon? Memory. Memory is one, yes. Memory. We talked about some this morning. The will. The conscience, common sense, heart's desire, those are all mind faculties. How about your imagination? Your imagination is a mind faculty. All of these things were glorifying God. And there's many more mind faculties that we have. We want to use each one. The Bible says that the imagination will be evil continually at the end of time. The imagination. The imagination is used to be used and you're to be taught how to use your imagination at, in your education and that's what faith is. So what we're trying to teach you here is how in the true education principles is you take the spiritual, your Bible lesson, you can't see that, you can't see spiritual things. So you have a Bible story that helps you to see the spiritual things. Then you also have nature to be able to see the spiritual side. And that's what strengthens your imagination. You use your imagination to think on heavenly things. But today we have cartoons, we have dinosaurs talking, we have a lot of animals talking in cartoons. We have a lot of perversion of the imagination. We have video games and we have movies and all kinds of things to distort our imagination. So God says let's educate and train our mind faculties, one major one being the imagination, by um, teaching our children to think on spiritual things, 
to think on things that God has made. Just We just took a little walk down to the ocean, to the sea there, and uh, looking at the, the waves, the water, and the sand, and the seashells that God designed. He designed each one, bringing the children's minds to the Creator's mind. The very things that we see that God's hand has made show us a little picture of God's mind and how he thinks. And by studying those things, studying birds, studying the human body, studying rocks and butterflies and flowers and plants, that gives you a picture of the way God thinks. He thinks in laws because everything that God has made has laws that govern it. So you're seeing and using your imagination in many ways to see God's thoughts in creation. And so you're strengthening your mind faculties to learn God's way, the spiritual, the physical, and um, the mental. Mental, physical, and spiritual. Those are the three uh, parts of the body that we're educating. All right, every faculty and mind of mind and soul reflected the Creator's glory. So as we study the things in nature, we are to look for His character qualities. And what are we learning this week? What character quality are we really focusing on? Neatness and cleanness. Yes, and you can see that even in a world where sin is, uh, you can see that God has little cleaner uppers little things, ants, you know, that go after um, sweaty things, uh, uh, food that's left out, crumbs. God has things to clean, help clean things up. So if we do our part and keep our surroundings clean, we'll have less pests to uh, be concerned about. All right, Adam and Eve, they were endowed with a high mental and spiritual gifts. They were made a little lower than the angels, Hebrews 2, 7, that they might not only discern the wonders of the visible universe, but comprehend moral responsibilities and obligations. Adam and Eve, they were made in the likeness of God. Where were our first parents to receive their education? In the garden. That's right, in the garden. The Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. He put them, Adam and Eve, in a garden. And here's our backyard after we had planted many things, and we also planted some things for the children to um, play on. Um, but uh, in the one corner there, there's uh, a lot of flowers. And that was uh, so wonderful. I wasn't really into gardening and even planting, so most of this was done by that uh, father that had come with his family to our home. And he planted like 150 flower bulbs under my window. And it was just so marvelous. People would go by, and this is a residential area, Arizona, not a whole lot um, really growing there. It was desert. And they saw this little Garden of Eden uh, pop, popping up. And uh, we got so many people that asked us about it. And that, that's a witness. How you live is a witness, and people will ask. And we have, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. So there in the midst or center, God places the tree of life. The tree of life represented him. It's a tr real tree, and it bore real fruit, and Adam and Eve ate from it, and they had to be separated from it when they sinned. It re represented God, because when they sinned, they no longer could commune with God face to face. They had to be separated. And so the same with us. That's why we have to have faith today. We have faith based though on the evidence that God has given us.
that there is a God and so we have God's Word that has been handed down to us from a long time. And then it says, Here amidst the beautiful scenes of nature, untouched by sin, our first parents were to receive their education. I hope that you get that picture in your mind of the first school. How beautiful it was. How beautiful the lesson books were. And if we can keep that in mind, it will help us as we are coming out of what we consider is school and keep our minds on the model school to help us return to what God intended because this earth is going to be made new and God is going to turn it into what he intended it to be once again. And as we go further here, we're going to find out what he intended the Garden of Eden to be. Remember, it was a model school, and um, God wanted that to be duplicated. Who directed their education? The Father, the Heavenly Father. In his interest for his children, our Heavenly Father personally directed their education. And here's some large muscadine grapes at Yuchi Pines. Uh, they uh, are so tasty. They still have the seeds. You eat the seeds, but they are so um, nutritious, so helpful, especially if people have cancer. Um, <clears throat> so uh, who has changed the fruit today and the food and taken the seeds out? Man. Man has changed what God hath put together. God said, let no man put asunder what he has put together. And so we are causing man to, the image of man, of, yes, which is God. The image of man is to be, we're made in God's image. Satan is trying to deface it, to deform it, to de make diseases come upon it. To, to all kinds of things Satan wants to just do away with the image of God in man. And so we have uh, on our campus grapes with seeds. <laughs> They're good. Who else did they receive counsel and instruction from? Adam and Eve received instruction. Often they were visited by his messengers, the holy angels. And you think about this because when you are being educated God's way, you also will receive heavenly messengers. <clears throat> it's amazing, as I have studied this way over the last 12 years, how uh, much instruction God has given me. And it is so wonderful to have these holy angels come and visit us. And from them received counsel and instruction. So we have Jesus, we have um, the Father, and also the angels. Often as they walked in the garden in the cool of the day, they heard the voice of God and face to face held communion with the eternal. Now parents, when you teach your children face to face, it is the best way to educate them to commune with them, to talk to them. When they have questions, you're there to answer them. You are representatives of God to them. And so what a privilege it is, parents. God has given us families here on this earth as we have been separated from him, our Father in heaven, our creator. God has given us object lessons of the family to help reunite our families with God and also to learn what it really means to be a family. We're told that there won't need to be marriage in heaven. There won't need to be uh, having children because these are lessons for us to learn to uh, be married to Christ, have him first and foremost in our life. And to grow up, the whole objective of having children is to help them grow up and help you as parents and teachers to understand that that's the whole objective 
work to, of us is to be children and grow up into the full stature of men and women in Christ Jesus. We're told that will happen when Jesus comes and we're raised with him, we will grow up into the full stature of men and women in Christ Jesus. Throughout eternity, we'll continue to grow. But on this earth, we are considered children. Unless you become like a little child, you shall not receive the glory of God. <clears throat> we must become like little children and be students. The best teachers are the best learners. All right, instruction from the angels. What were God's thoughts towards men? Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us that his thoughts toward us or towards them were thoughts of peace and not of evil. It's important that you know how God thinks about you. It's important how your children know how you think towards them. His very every purpose was their highest good. And parents, that's the way that um, he wants our thoughts toward our children, to be of their highest good. What was man's work? Man's work in Genesis 2.15 says that Adam and Eve were committed, they was, Adam, to Adam and Eve was committed the care of the garden. Care of the garden. How many of you have had gardens? Good. Oh, don't you just love the whole experience? There's so many lessons that God has to teach us there. Though rich in all that the owner of the universe could supply, they were not to be idle. So God wants us to learn to be workers. And you know, when I, I was working at Sunlight, I was doing a, a job that I really didn't like to do. And that was this uh, Sabbath school material. It's not just Sabbath school material, but it's your children's actual schoolwork from birth to eight to 10. It was my job and my daughter's job to put that into the computer. And that's a very tedious job, word processing. Uh, to take from one place and put it into the computer. And we'd have to do that sometimes for eight hours a day. And so I would pray, Lord, help me to do this because I know how much good it's done for me and how much good it's going to do for others. And so I did a study on the spider. <laughs> a notebook like this. Can you imagine studying the spider and getting that much information? Well, I learned... The one thing, the major thing that I learned from the spider is in Proverbs, it tells us there are four things that are little, but exceedingly wise. And it says, go to these four things. Do you know what they are? Ants, spiders, what else? No. Well, in some translations, it might be translated that. But, and I think that these four things are just a sample of all the things that God has made. But it's the ant, the spider, which are insects, and one more insect, grasshopper. So three insects and one mammal, the coney, the coney. Well, I studied the spider, I studied all of them, and in fact, the Boutes have studied the coney and came up with some things I didn't see, which is so marvelous, and I have to get their study because you forget. You have to you know, read it over and over and over. But getting back to the spider, teaching us to be exceedingly wise, you know, uh, do you know when the spider spins its web? Before the sun comes up. When did you have to come to worship today? Before the sun came up. When did the Israelites have to go out and get the manna in the wilderness? Before the sun came up. And you can find story after story about Jesus. He got his strength from going and spending time with his father before the sun came up. Was Jesus wise? The spider can teach us to be wise. Get up before the sun comes up and study. That's like the spider making its web. It's making its web so that it can catch its prey and have its food. What do you catch in the morning when you study? 
catch the promises of God and the principles of God and that word washes away your sins, washes away things that are in your heart that you don't even know about, that needs to be cleaned out. This is cleaning time, cleansing time of the heart. And so praise God, however hard it is for you to get up early, come because that's the time that God wants to teach you things that you'll not learn any other time of the day before the sun comes up. He wants to commune with you. And until it's a habit, it's going to be uncomfortable. So you have to really work at it. It's like a scientific experiment. You have to practice, practice, practice till you get it. All right. We want to be wise, don't we? All right. Though rich in all that the owner of the universe could supply, they were not to be idle. Workers, the spiders, and all the things that God has made can teach us to be workers. Well, this right here is at Yuchi Pines. We have rows of kale, and it lasts for months and months. And um, if you put it in, in you grow it, uh, when it goes through a freeze, it is so sweet and so good. We also dehydrate it, and uh, they put a cheese, cashew cheese sauce over it, dehydrate it, and it's out of this world good. Or they uh, juice it for especially cancer patients. Um, the Bible says about leaves, what does it say? For the healing of the nations. That's right, for the healing of the nations. All right. What were the benefits of their work? Useful occupation was appointed them as a blessing. Oh, what a blessing this is. All right, thank you, men. Um, useful occupation was appointed them as a blessing to strengthen the body, to expand the mind, and to develop the character. Parents, if you have children, uh, birth to 8 to 10 years of age, they need to be working, especially outdoors, and running, and developing their physical constitution so they have strong physical constitutions. When they put little children in a school setting and sit them down at a desk for hours and they're hunched over, they develop bad posture, and, a, and they're not dressed always that well, and sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's cold, and um, so they develop diseases and illnesses just from uh, the not getting the physical activity that they need to and being outdoors. So also to expand the mind. The mind is expanded as they're working outside, and to develop the character. What afforded them, Adam and Eve now, an exhaustless source of instruction and delight? Parents, if you think you're the only instructors of your children, if you homeschool them, you're wrong. Adam, well, we've got Adam and Eve. We know who their instructors were. Let's look at Jesus. Jesus had a mother and a father. He had siblings, brothers and sisters. But who were Jesus' teachers? The angels, God his father, and yes, his parents, and everything that God made were his teachers. Everything that God made. So don't think that you're the only teachers. And also those, hopefully, who are doing right, you will surround your children with so that they can learn from them as well. All right. The book of nature, which spread its living lessons before them, afforded an exhaustless source of instruction and delight. We are never to be burned out of education. We are never to be tired of learning, because learning is going to go throughout eternity. So we want to make learning the most wonderful experience. Here's some sunflowers. And the sunflower has this big head, doesn't it? And these petals. Did we t talk about the petals and what they say? Every petal says, I love you from God. When I was little, we used to take a, a flower and go, I lo he loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. And we wondered, you know, when we got to the last petal, if he would love us or he wouldn't. Well, every petal says, I love you. God is always going to love you. And when you are obedient, don't your parents love you even more? Yes, God wants us to be obedient. We want to make God and our parents and all of those around us happy. 
God loves us and he says it on every petal. So the sun, when it comes up and goes around, where does the head of the sunflower go? It follows the sun. The sun is a symbol or representative of Jesus, of our creator. It's not Jesus. It represents him because of what it does. What does it do? Scientists have said that if they could understand everything about the sun, they would know it all. They would know everything. The sun represents life, doesn't it? It's life-giving. Life-giving. It represents Christ. He's the life-giver. And the heathen who don't know God make idols out of these things. Make idols out of cows. Make idols out of beetles. Make idols out of the sun, the moon, the stars. Um, but that's not why we study them. We study them to know the Creator to see his character and his laws in the things that he has made. So the sunflowers follow the sun, and we need to follow the sun of righteousness. Where can you find God's name written? Remember now, God's name is, it represents his character. So where can you find God's name written? On every leaf of the forest, on and stone of the mountains, in every shining star, in earth, sea, and sky, God's name is written. And I'm going to tell you what God just told me before this meeting. What is it that he's waiting for in you and me? What's going to be sealed here? His name. His name. He's waiting for his name to be sealed in your forehead. His character. Oh, you think, oh, you should have known that. No, God is he's communing with each of us. We have walls up where we can't see things or understand them. <clears throat> he wants us to put these things together. So as I go out and I see his name written on the leaves, on the shells, on the stone, on the water drops, on the atoms, the molecules, the body parts. He wants most of all to have his name written in your forehead so that he's first in every area of your life. That's what he's waiting for. <clears throat> We're the only thing, the sinful heart of man is the only thing that does not have his name written there. What does holding con converse with nature teach you with both the animate and inanimate. That means the live things, the things like the rocks, the seashells that aren't alive. Those are the inanimate things. With both of them, <clears throat> creation with leaf and flower and tree and with every living creature from the Lephiathon le le of the waters to the mode in the sunbeam, the dwellers in Eden held converse, gathering from each the secrets of its life. So as you study the things, we, they call it today science, when you study the things that God's, God has made, you're holding converse with Him. He wants to commune with you when you study about Him in the things that He has made, even the body, the human body, the secrets of its life. Holding converse. Um, we have a butterfly. I don't know what kind of plant that is on the pink flower up here. We have an okra flower, and um, we have some kale. And <clears throat> just sitting among those things, looking at their beauty, you can hold converse with your creator. What were the objects of study? God's glory in the heavens, the immutable worlds in their orderly revolution, the balancing of the clouds, Job 37, 16, the mysteries of light and sound of day and night, all were objects of study by the pupils of Earth's first school. And Sunlight Education Ministry has included many of these topics right here in the second grade to eighth grade book. So you have a book on the sun, about almost 400 pages, studying the sun from the Bible.
learning the facts about the sun and having it parallel right back to the Bible because the sun represents Christ. Beautiful. And I hope that someday, if we're still here, and even maybe in heaven, you'll be writing about the things that God has made. <clears throat> here we have Meadow Lake and the loons. Uh, I could tell you a lot about the loons, the water birds, and then some special flowers. What was open to their minds? What was opened was the laws and the operations of nature and the great principles of truth that govern the spiritual universe were opened to their minds by the infinite author of all. God wants to teach you as you learn about the things that he has made. How was the mental and spiritual powers developed and their highest pleasures realized? 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says, in the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, their mental and spiritual power, powers developed and they realized the highest pleasures of holy existence. That's the kind of education God wants you to have. Where could God's glory be seen? As it came from the Creator's hand, not only the Garden of Eden, but the whole earth was exceedingly beautiful. No taint of sin or shadow of death marred the fair creation. God's glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. The morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. I want to hear that. Thus the earth, a fit emblem of him who is abundant in goodness and truth, Exodus 34, 6, a fit study for those who were made in his image. And so the enemy of souls has taken God's plan and his system of education, and he's given us, he's perverted it so much that we take, we, t we live in the cities. God didn't plan to have cities. <clears throat> And we sit in classrooms all day. Then we sit in the workplace many times all day. And the Bible says the strength of Egypt is in sitting down. The strength of Egypt. But God's way is physical. He wants us to be physical. And that expands the mind and use our mental abilities as well. To be symmetrical. He wants a symmetrical, well-balanced character. And we wonder why there's so many so many mental problems today, so many mental imbalances. If we'd come back to God's system of education, we'd clear up a lot of um, mental illness as well. What was the Garden of Eden a representation of? It was a representation of what God desired the whole earth to become. What would you say it looks like today? Have we done it in 6,000 years? Or we lost the plan, we lost the goal. But we don't have to. We can go. We can take it back. And you could see in the beginning of this PowerPoint, m my family's um, feeble attempts at trying to bring in a residential area uh, the Garden of Eden plan back to uh, our family. Yet that experience that we had, though it wasn't perfect, my children weren't perfect at that time. It will be an experience never to be forgotten. And that's what God wants for us. He doesn't want us to forget uh, how he has led us. And it was his purpose that as the human family increased in numbers, they should establish other homes and schools like the one he had given. So every home is to be a school. Every home is to be a church. Every home is to be a sample of heaven on earth. These are high goals high standards. If you don't keep your eye on the goal, on the target, you'll never reach it. So no matter where you are on the, in the picture, if you keep aiming at the target, God will help you reach it because it's not by your own power that you actually reach it. It's by his and that's what faith is all about. There is our backyard. We had my daughter helped. She loved to plant. Uh, we transplanted, we've talked about that, transplanted many seedlings uh, of kale. We had 80 kale plants in our backyard there in Arizona, and kale grows pretty well. 
All right, what would occupy the whole earth? What would be steady? Thus, in course of time, the whole earth might be occupied with homes and schools where the words and the works of God should be studied and where the students should thus be fitted more and more fully to reflect throughout endless ages the light of the knowledge of his glory. Some more um, of Yuchi Pines and... Um, this is a PowerPoint that I um, give in um, teaching uh, from the book Education. And we go through chapter after chapter. Uh, we only have um, so many classes, so we don't get through the whole book. But it, it helps to give the students a taste of it, and hopefully they'll go back and continue to read the whole book. Well, I hope that you have been blessed, that you have learned a little bit more about the model school and what God intended for this earth to look like. And uh, it starts with each one of us. The only way this planet is going to be changed is one by one. So if we wait for somebody else, this person or that person, uh, it's not going to be done. Don't wait. Start today. And it might be just in a pot that you start your first plant and take care of it and watch it blossom. Start however you can start. Start small. Uh, sometimes we start so big that you know, it gets overwhelming. So start. That's the main thing. All right, let's have a word of prayer to close. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that uh, even though it is hot and uh, some may be tired and weary, I thank you for giving each one uh, the attention span that uh, was needed for uh, their individual life. I pray that uh, you will continue to speak to us and, and teach us how to have converse with the things that you have made. And by beholding these things, we will be changed into your image because there is order, there is law, there is neatness, there is detail. Um, we get to see your mind, your thoughts, and that will turn our thoughts and feelings and actions into habits that will glorify you and reflect your character, and we can have a destiny with you. Thank you for being here teaching each one of us, and may we continue to receive your Holy Spirit's power to understand, to see, and to do what you ask us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.